in the air of Orca City Hardcore Defense Corp Task Force on the way back. We have acquired the clearance of Orca's Air Control Center. We can keep climbing after we leave the dome. This is the first time for me to take the transporter that leaves the atmosphere on its own. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> that was a sentence. <laughs> it's like the last episode of Metallotron. Transform. Break out of the atmosphere. Keen, can you feel it? This feeling that boils your blood? Transform? Just like the gyre of UNNF? No, no. Things too realistic. It's not like that. Ah. Huh. You mercs. It's all about the contract, isn't it? Mm. Captain, what's the matter? I just love having babes yell at me. <laughs> what? <laughs> Lieutenant wants us to escort her to the administrative zone of Orcus. It's not in part of the contract. Administrative zone? It's a contract or contact center of UNF. Perhaps it has something to do with your intel? She didn't say why. Perhaps she's cautious about us, the mercs. But the UNF insisted on saving her. Perhaps the intel at her hands are really critical. Working arbitrarily seems like the habit of intelligence agent. Now the long-range communication has not been restored. It'll be nice if we can contact Nancy. Tarathir, do you have a dream? I just want to find a job I'm good at. Just like the one I have now. As for me, I'm dreaming to be the hero from the last great war when I was a kid. Whether for those shiny medals or the cool looking customized paint job, none of them matter to me. I want to let everyone live peacefully. That's the best pursuit. Huh. You're a merc and you dream about peaceful life? <sighs> uh. A bunch of guys drifting with the flow. You're nothing different from those mercs hired by Steel Dawn. Just the leech on the battlefield. Now the Mars colony is facing a greater danger. And you all just... What's going on? Look, there's an explosion in the city. Could it be Steel Dawn? Unidentified flying object detected. Closing in fast. <gasps> this is someone new. That's oh, tiny. So in Taishogi, they're always crash landing, aren't they? その状況を報告しろ。4ベクター Oh, I think they're switching sides. I just pressed the wrong button several times and burned all of my usable items. I'm sorry. Ooh, we ooh, gotta. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I used all of my consumables like a doof. Oh, I see. <laughs> ヨンベクターブースター機能不全機関砲及び艦載機アクティブです。誰さ、エドガー、参加して警戒を頼む。キン、UNF と連絡を取ってくれ。敵さんのお出ましたサンダーボルト迎撃する。救難信号を発信し
And it looks like we're under an atmospheric dome. All the hexagons. I like the painted trees. And the ground textures, too. Yeah, no, whoever they got to do the art for this, like, their art team is pretty solid. Mm-hmm. Like, that's actually one of the things that surprises me about this game. Like, this is a really nice-looking indie game. That's what, I mean, quite frankly, it was the giant chibi posters that drew me over to the booth. But... Wait, he's joining the battle. Oh, is he the one with the sword? Looks like it. Yeah, he has the katana. I mean, swords are pretty dang effective in this game. Mm -hmm. Okay. Excuse me, shield man. I'm incapable of jumping. I don't know how to deal with this. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. shoot. Oh, dude. You know, that would actually be kind of a fun DD campaign. What? Just like, Reese. Oh! Uh, just reskin everything as a mecha? <laughs> well, I, there has to be ways that we could make a Starfinder campaign into something involving mecha instead of ship well, they battles have mecha. mecha. Oh, yeah, they do, don't they? Are they akin to exosuits, or are they... Hmm. Now, it'd be great to have different settings, rather than just the classic fantasy. Like, I would absolutely love just a conversion guide that just, like, uh... You know, here here's the D&D 5th Edition, like, Player's Handbook. Uh, but, like... Just mildly reskin for. Oh. Oh, let's see. You want to send me that link on um on oh, Discord? Because there's no way I'm going to be able to check it on Twitch chat, unfortunately. Yeah, probably on the Discord. Thought it'd be safe here, but I ran into a large group of terrorists. Thanks to Major Filipov from the UNF, we managed to get here. If you ever encounter him, please say thanks to him for us. We have to go... Tell a dude thank you. Also, there's landmines. Realistically... Depending on what you add or subtract to a campaign setting, or, or not a campaign setting, but a, a rule system, blah, a rule set or system, it, you're likely able to reskin things with ease. It's just, I suppose there are, you, in a way, it's more work to actually build your world and find comparable equivalents. So, for instance, if you ever wanted to make a kind of gothic horror campaign, you would pretty much have to say, hey, instead of orcs and elves and goblins and such, you have humans, you have vampires, maybe you have half vampires, that's what the Dampir are, werewolves. Werewolves would use the same rule set as, say, the skinwalkers or the shapeshifters or I think there I mean, are there, ways there to make wear this and wear that. Werewolf rules. Mm hmm And then you just have to forbid everyone from using I you can determine how much magic is in your universe. Maybe uh maybe there is a kind of druidism but it's only allowed oh, to werewolves or maybe there are priests that use holy magic. I uh, what? I don't enjoy that one as much, honestly. <laughs> nope. Trace Apparently. of firefight. Yep. 
Apparently, this Vindicator was destroyed due to being greatly outnumbered. The operators remain... Wait, the operators remain... Wait, what? The oper operator remains next to it? Or the remains next to it cannot be identified anymore? Probably the yeah. remains. Yeah. Only his digital dog tag still remains intact. Sukhoi Filipov, UNAF, Major Serial Number 201825SU. 34SY. My one problem with And like there's a... also different levels of hard to soft sci fi and fantasy. Yeah. My one problem. Or is it the... actually, it's hard to soft science fiction and it's low to high fantasy. Oh. That's what they refer to it as. Huh? What's going on? Trees block my machine gun bullets. <laughs> Not the biggest deal, but it's annoying for dealing with these landmines. I mean, if your friends could play a, a setting that has maids in it... There's... Oh, no, we absolutely could, but none of my art assets would be valid. No. You would also have to determine how large are the mechs. What how what are the restrictions for the universe? Will you I would also prefer a campaign similar to how we've been treating this and or this game treats their characters where they do have some missions outside of the suits. Cuz it'd, yeah. be, it'd be rough if everything was just a mecha battle against other mecha or giant monsters. If you think about it, for equipment and stuff, you'd probably have to deal primarily with the armaments that your character has, what the mecha has, and then upgrading the mecha throughout the campaign. You know what I mean? Yeah. We. Sorry, it is slow. Monument to the Orcas Central Park has recorded the history of the uh, of the city in memory of peace ceremony, 8th of December, 2191. Neo UN founded. The new UN. Oh, I just randomly sniped the sniper up there. Okay, so far so good. What do you prefer when it comes to mecha anime? When they're fighting, like what we are here, an evil entity corporation that produces their own machines, or do you prefer the monsters like in Evangelion? Uh, and in Power Rangers and other things. In Power Rangers, most of the monsters were summoned via mystical means, too. It wasn't just a science fiction. Or do you prefer nanoviruses, something that takes over existing mecha, or I mean, becomes amorphous and I'm open to more. Oh, I killed the generator. That's well. I suppose what I'm asking is, do you prefer aliens versus mecha, or do you prefer mecha versus mecha? Uh, so I think part of it is it's entirely flavored based on my own experiences. And so I've specifically grown up with, uh... I grew up with Robotech, which is pretty rad. And that was mecha versus aliens, but the aliens were also usually in mecha. But were they humanoid aliens, or were yeah, they Yeah, they were just like... 30 feet tall for some reason. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, it was just one of the random battle tech games on uh, GameCube. And the weird part was it was like kind of the midpoint in the story, so, slash like the ending of one of the main stories. So they straight up had like some of the taller characters, uh, some of the alien characters just on Earth as like allies, and it was weird. <laughs> 
Looks like that guy is just hiding in the tunnel. Uh, let's see. But yeah, so I liked Robotech on the GameCube. That was that was a rad game. Unfortunately, it was also really hard, so I ended up just playing it with cheats on. Um, oh, look at this. I like how they have greenery on top of every roof. Yeah. Oh, dude, green roofs are such a... Like, I really hope we end up with, like, stupid amounts of greenery on rooftops in the next, like, 50, 100 years or whatever. Really, just a lot of green energy and green tech and other stuff would be really nice. But yeah, oh. but yeah, I personally prefer Mecha versus Mecha generally, because generally, it gives you a little bit more of a... Oh. Now I really want to find that one mecha anime that I found, that I discovered a long time ago, but I never got to see the majority of. Uh, essentially, they find this boy on a, another world. Blue. Is it the hmm? Uh, it's blue something. But he's... He's like an alien, and he can become a mecha oh. thing? Oh! Oh, you no, were... you're thinking of um, Heroic Age. Is that it? Yeah. Maybe that is. Yeah, because it's like a wild-looking boy. It turns into yes. a mecha. There's like the gold people and the silver people and some other things. Yeah. I watched that back in high school. And it was okay. To, and he had to one by one kill off the major leaders of the other factions that were yeah. also mecha alien people. Yeah. What? He effectively had to kill kind of his own... His own kind. Yeah. It was weird. Damn disruption. Bases outside the city are cut off, even the comm system. Can't rely on the reinforcement now. The priority is to save the civilians. Um Yeah, that one was okay. I uh, I'm I'm a huge proponent specifically of the Gundam series. Because they always tend to be eh, they're the, not always better. The only Gun Gundam series that I ever saw with you though, it starts off really slow and I already disliked all the main characters because it was just either a moody guy and a bunch of clingy girls or or non-existent secondary characters. Uh, it that was, was just... probably Gundam Wing, which, yeah, they don't actually start doing Gundam battles for like an episode or two. More hostiles are heading this way, but some civilians are still trapped in the building ahead. Requesting a backup. Please do something before the reinforcement gets here. Didn't we also try watching Macross and it was very similar to... Macross, the most recent Macross was just awkward. <laughs> I just usually don't like the character ensembles that they have because it seems like the majority of them are useless and only really there to prop up the main character. Also, wasn't there an, a mecha anime, eh, anime that we started watching and you had looked ahead in the plot and refused to watch the rest because of oh, the last it got episode? Rapey. Yes. Because that had seemed like it was a good primary trio of friends, but yeah. Yeah, effectively, the guy had the ability to... Uh, to pilot a very special mecha, right? Well, or not just that, but he could also... Um, Um, yeah, but he could also, like, uh, mind, like, body swap with people. Wait, what? Yeah. It was we didn't very get to strange. that part. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, Valvrave, the Liberator, or whatever it was called. Really? That was yeah, it? Yeah, that, that was the one. Mm -hmm. I liked the idea of it, but yeah, uh, same thing with Gundam Seed. I, I couldn't get into Gundam Seed because it had characters actually sleeping with each other, but that was just weird and odd, and I didn't like it. Yeah, Code Geass. That has mecha in it? Yeah, yeah. Code Geass is like 50% mecha, 50% like. Oh, because I only. Note. I only ever saw. Oh, better pay attention to the dialogue. <laughs> She's just saying she also has a mission. I just always see. Lelouch and his girlfriend Cece or whatever her name is and people like to cosplay as them. I I'd never seen the mecha before. Uh honestly, like Code Code Geass is pretty decent. I I've never been inspired to rewatch it because it was very sad. Mm-hmm. -hmm. Oh. Oh, I waste my heal there. Kind of like how there's the new Evangelion. I I could never get into Evangelion. You're talking about how like you didn't like Gundam because the one character is super whiny. Oh, oh, I know. I didn't like the characters in in Evangelion, but I liked the Mecha so much, or the Avas, because they they're not really purely Mecha. But it was interesting that they were fighting waves of these very disparate and grotesque looking alien creatures. They were also just had a unique design. But no, I didn't like the characters. Because Shinji was just the, why am I put into this situation? Blur. And Asuka was really aggressive and made a lot of poor decisions and I mean well, she was just she madly a, in she, love with like the male commander characters so she was and she has a sad backstory like, and everything and then there it is Ray Ray was obviously emotionless passive well, I think she was supposed to be like this weird clone. Yeah, yeah, but that's that's giving away major plot points there. I'm not gonna mention who she's a clone of, but that's another layer of creepiness. Very awkward situations in that in that yep. anime. We've seen Full Metal Pan Panic, haven't we? We saw Fumofu. Oh, you wanted to show me Fumofu. Because Fumofu is hilarious and very lighthearted. We didn't actually see Mecha in that, though. Oh, uh, there mostly was like them one Mecha once. They usually just showed off the weird hamster suit and said, mm -hmm. Digital dog tag belongs to a UNF pilot. River forest, blah, blah, blah. The dog tags might be from backers as well. People are also met mentioning Eureka. My friends really liked that. I never I tried got around watching to watching Eureka. it. I was not super excited about it. I remember this mainly because the protagonist was kind of whiny, but not like too bad. But everybody treated him like utter garbage. Oh. Mm -hmm. It's one of those few games where like the main you character mean, was you mean shows. Uh, it's one of those where the uh, the main character was he was whiny, but he wasn't like too bad. I see you've been laying down mines for it to roll over. Fun. It doesn't actually do that much damage. Well, it is a boss. And I know that this one girl 
talked very glowingly of Razafon, and but you said that that was peculiar. I read the manga for that, and I think that is like one of the first times in an anime I saw like a girl's underwear. What? Period. Yeah. Uh oh. And it was. Wait, just no, like, I thought I thought you said that the first, the first uh, like bit of nudity you ever saw was in Ranma. Uh, well, yeah. And like I read Ramna, Ran, Ranma, and. Uh, Let's see. Now we have mixer materials. I I read Ranma and well, that was not worth it. Ranma and Ra Zephon at a what is it a was it a Borders or a Walden Books in a in a small mall in um, <laughs> in California. I thought your dad gave you Ranma. My dad gave me the first, uh, the first one, and then after that, I was like, "Well, this is amazing, even though it's real sketchy, but like that's okay." Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, admittedly, when I was young, I think so. My father's friend hell? inked a lot of comics. One comic was Coy Coyote, which actually had a, a bit of nudity and stuff going on in it, and I remember. I tried to read the story, but then I'd skip over the pages with it. But as a child, you're curious, and it's like, what's going on here? Oh. Oh, no. And then in Inuyasha, which was probably the one of the first manga that I read. Uh, well, uh -oh. those missiles just oh, suck. No. Yeah. A lot of the female demons would get their clothes torn so that their chests were exposed. It always happened. Oh, those missiles straight up just... Hit you through your shield. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna save all the landmines until the second phase. But yeah, my dad, my dad handed me Ranma, and that gave me some like weird expectations about life. What do you mean by weird expectations? I I don't know. Well, so what happens? I, was it a martial arts? It, uh, it was an ecchi manga masquerading as a martial arts manga. Wait, ecchi? As in like, um... But I thought the premise is pervert. the main character can switch between being male and female. Yeah, and wouldn't you believe that they uh, showed him off bathing as a girl more often than not? What, did he originally start as a guy? Yeah. Okay, and then he was cursed or something. Yeah, it right? was every time he was in hot water, he turned into a girl, and cold water would be a guy. Was I there think... ever a time where he was splashed by something, and it would be enough to turn oh, him? Oh, always. That was like a constant plot point. <laughs> so would he have to run around a corner, or let's go say he gets rained on, and he was oh, a no. girl. Oh, he no. He just didn't care. Wait, he didn't? No. Nah. Then people would get confused. Well, also, didn't his hair color change from black to red? Yeah. Okay. Ow. Yeah, because I'm familiar with... Like, everybody else was always, like, super bothered about it, but he just, like, took it super in stride. Which, like, okay, that made it a little bit better, but, but it was what, still what, creepy. What made it a martial arts anime, though? Was there a Because he was a martial was artist. The only a... reason why he got cursed was he went to this, like, weird training camp hot springs thing that turned his father into a panda <laughs> and him into a girl. How did his father get turned into a panda? Each pool had like a different curse. <laughs> so like one guy got turned into this Oh yeah, one guy got dipped into like several of them and got turned into a horror beast. Oh. Oh. So whatever happened to his father? Uh, was he just the the mascot of the anime, of the manga at that point? Uh, Hi, Dad. You're yeah, a panda. Yeah, actually, kind of. Really? Yeah, and he just like be there as a panda half the time, and it was just weird. Was he capable of talking anymore? Or was he just a panda? I think he was capable of talking. Why is this so much easier this time around? So. Ow. Were there any love interests? Did he have a, a awkward situation where multiple people were in love but with the different halves of him? Yes. That'd be awkward. 
It was awkward. So we got to that because we were talking about manga, specifically nudity in manga and how that's why you didn't really read much of Razathon. And we're going back to more mecha. This sucks. Uh, a mecha anime that- Those missiles Aww. suck. A mecha anime that I really liked the designs for, but it was more of a shoujo was Magic Knight Rare. One of the early Clamp series. Kind of had the, the magical girl trio taken from the real world and brought into a fantasy realm and turns out that they're supposed to be these, these magical knights and they each embody a different element and have a different god mecha associated with them and such and they only ever fight in the mecha a couple times and all the mecha could merge to become one massive one but I'm going to be a little focused okay this guy no, has crazy missiles after a certain point that just kill you but it was interesting because each of the girls eventually had a a love interest from this realm and stuff like that. Everything fell very neatly into place. Oh, they're in a Super Robot Wars game? Nice. Yeah, I think it was the fire one associated with Hikaru it was supposed to be like a fiery wolf. And then there was the green one for Fu was a a great bird. I don't know if it was associated with air. The color was green. And then there was a sea serpent dragon who was blue. So that was the, the trio. Notice how, god hmm? damn, I just lost almost all my health to freaking <laughs> crazy missiles. Because notice how I, I like, I can sit there and block. I can't outrun them. Well, I think you can only block so many, though. Yeah, no down, because missiles. Yeah. Because... Trains! Now you, like, now you despise them. The missiles are slower than me, but they're in such a large... They're in such a large, like, spread pattern that, like... You could shoot them, but would you run out of not ammo? Not easily. Oh, no, not those. The energy ones, you can't. Yeah, I can't shoot the energy ones. I can shoot down the crazy missiles, but not while running away. All little school buses. Oh. I, I think the worst part is really just like, it has this like, fairly decently sized health bar. They also gave me a shit ton of landmines, but the boss tends to destroy them. Uh, just automatically, like the crazy missiles run into the landmines. Mm -hmm. Well, you're taking off a lot of health, and you haven't taken that much damage yet. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. Once I once I hit the uh, 
Once I hit the chain gun, it doesn't matter. Like, I can minigun them for a little while, and then I can't anymore. Oh, wow, yeah, and now all these guys are down on the battlefield. Oh. I mean, these guys ain't business. be really nice if I got to keep all this money that I'm collecting, at, <laughs> at the very least. Do I have any other power-ups? I've got a temporary barrier which, get, which gets wrecked by the missiles, and, like I said, landmines that uh, don't work against him at all well. Like, trust me, I'm not... I'm not ignoring some major mechanic that makes makes this easier. It's just the execution is, like, significantly more demanding than most of the stuff I usually have to deal with. Mm-hmm. the hell? He murdered me, but there wasn't a... Oh, ouch. Yep, yeah, see, love. every once in a while he'll just, like, drop a mortar. Oh, it stopped. Oh, that was weird. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's the answer. If he starts firing in that direction, he destroys your mines. Who cares about the mines? Hmm? Notice how the crazy missiles aim in the direction he, uh, uh, mm -hmm. that I was in? Right, right, because he fired it far in advance and it doesn't have homing. Oof, that was a lot of... Doesn't matter. Very, very contained fire. Nice. Yeah, the trick isn't to dodge the missiles. The trick is just to break the AI and Anybody just get out of there. Because you will fire the missiles regardless of whether or not you're in the right direction. And yeah, then they just don't do anything. Captain's wound's been sterilized. There's nothing urgent at the Lark. Eh, stabilized, but sterilized makes oh, sense, yeah. too. Sorry. Huh. Because he said wound. Mm -hmm. You don't stabilize a wound. Uh, anyway. <laughs> uh. Lieutenant Karuna has gone towards the administrative zone. We need to... Edgar, where are you going? There's a girl at that building. She's trapped in the fire. Ah. There, there. Just jump on the palm of the robot. Don't be afraid. You'll be fine. I'll catch you. Thank you. My name's Edgar. What's your name? Yingli. Sounds like the name of my sister. Yingli, where's your family? My dad is at the station there. What are you doing here alone? I forgot about my teddy bear. I came back to fetch it. God, I hate that trip so much. Mm -hmm. I forgot my completely inconsequential uh, belonging, and now I'm dying. I'll take you to your daddy now. There, there, I'll escort her. I'll be back. Okay, make it quick. Ah, daddy! My daddy is on that bus! Thank you, Edgar. This is my favorite teddy bear. It's yours now. Wait, so she she risked her life to get the teddy bear and now she's giving it away? I, I yep. suppose he saved her life, but... And now it's yours! Wait, you're, you're not gonna... Talk, yeah. Yingli, thank you, whatever. Oh, Yingli, thank you. Or, uh, yeah, it's too late. You skipped it, you skipped it. Anyway, all right, let's go. I didn't know that you had a sister. How old is she? She already passed away. Um, sorry? This is supposed to be a morose moment. What are you doing? It's all right. It was a long time ago. Darather, UNF needs people to organize the evacuation. I need to go help him. No, we still have the mission at hand. We can't be distracted by other matters here. <laughs> These terrorists are all cruel, cold-blooded killers. If we don't interfere, more people will die. Our mission is to bring the lieutenant back safely. She can handle herself, Terrather. We need to help those unarmed civilians. 
That's the job of the soldier. We need to focus on our job. Ah, well, okay. In an avalanche, every snowflake is responsible. D. So what was up with that teddy bear? It was magenta and it had a hat and a bow tie? Or yup. What? Is that, is that pertinent? They made an image for it. Is it a mascot of theirs? Is it something in real life that they wanted to put in the game? Or will it show up in the the workroom or any anywhere else? I don't know. That would be the kind of item someone gives to you and then it ends up saving your life later. Like a stray bullet passes through the mecha and hits the guy in the chest, but oh, he'd been wearing the teddy bear at the time. No, a teddy bear wouldn't be enough. Oh, well, apparently I've missed two weapon blueprints in past missions. Also, holy crap, we still have a long way to go. This is not ac this is actually not a short game. Of course not. We haven't even uncovered who the potential villains are and we've only killed one of them. This is going to be one of those things where you go to a new locale, you find out more about your companions, you find out more about the terrorist organization and then you fight one of the bosses. I know, it's just with the production value on the art, the voice acting and stuff, I figured they would have cut corners on the uh like the duration of the game. The answer is nope. 